15, verse number 11. This is a story, a man of, a, of the prodigal son. And I'll title our message, The Homecoming of the Prodigal. The Homecoming of the Prodigal. Now, we find several places in Scripture where uh, people went out of this world. Uh, we find that Enoch went out of this world by a whirlwind. He never saw death. Uh, we see that Elijah went, or Elijah went up by, by a whirlwind. Enoch went up, uh, and he was not, for God took him. Now, people have said, well, was, are the cosmonauts and the astronauts the first ones? No, Enoch was because he was a was-not. And so we see in the Scripture that there's people that, that have gone on to be with the Lord. Uh, we see that Lazarus, one in Scripture, Lazarus and the rich man. These two people departed out of this life. Lazarus was escorted into heaven, into Abraham's bosom by the angels. But the rich man, lost without God, having never accepted Christ as his Savior, woke up in hell. In hell he lift up his eyes. Friend, that's a serious thought today. Where are you going to open your eyes when you die? Are you going to be like, the, like Lazarus and... And, and when the day of death comes to you and, and you're laying there on your dying deathbed and, and here comes the, the death angel and as he comes, here comes the angel of the Lord to escort you over into glory. Amen. What a day that'll be. God's people die well. Or are you going to be like the rich man that when he was on death's bed that, that, uh, that, he, that the death angel come to him and in hell he lift up his eyes. Why? Because he never trusted Jesus as his Savior. And I'm here to tell you today, friend, heaven is real and hell is real. And I'm here to tell you that everybody in this building right now that's listening to me is going to heaven or you're going to hell. And there's no difference. There's no way that you can ever escape hell once you get there. But friend, there's never any way to get to heaven except in this life. You don't make your decision after you're dead. You make your decision when Jesus is dealing with your heart. When the sweet spirit of conviction comes over you, friend, that's when you come to a knowledge of the Savior. We read about this prodigal son. Now, he didn't die, but he got away from God. I'm here as a testimony, and I've already heard testimony this morning of those that have gotten away from God. And here's what the, here's what, uh, the prodigal son did in verse number 12, or verse number 11, and he said, a certain man had two sons. And the younger of them said to his father, Father, give me the portion of goods that falleth to me and he divided unto them his living. And not many days after, the younger son gathered all together and took his journey into a far country, and there wasted his substance with riotous living. And when he had spent all, there rose a mighty famine in that land. And he began to be in want. And he went and joined himself to a citizen of that country, and he sent him into his fields to feed swine. And he would fain have filled his belly with the husk that the swine did eat, and no man gave unto him. And when he came to himself, he said, he said, How many hired servants of my fathers have bread enough and to spare? And I perish with hunger. I will arise and go to my father. And I will say unto him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before thee, and am no more worthy to be called thy son. Make me as one of thy hired servants. And he arose and came to his father. But when he was yet a great way off, his father saw him and had compassion and ran and fell on his neck and kissed him. And the son said unto him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and in thy sight, and no more worthy to be called thy son. But the father said to his servants, Bring forth the best robe and put it on him and put a ring on his hand and shoes on his feet and bring hither the fatty calf and kill it and let us eat and be merry. For this my son was dead and is alive again. He was lost and is found. And they began to be Mary. Now this is a story of a young man, teenage boy. And you know how it is when you were a teenager. I remember how it was when I was a teenager. And we've got some teenagers here. And I'm going to tell you, don't do the way of the prodigal. Just don't do that. Don't go there. Not everybody has to. Not everybody has to go the way of the prodigal. It was just so that I did. Now, I didn't go as far as this young man did, but I got away from God, and I'm ashamed of it today. But I'm glad that the God in heaven loved me enough that he'd be merciful to me and kind to me and allow me, amen, to get back in fellowship with him. 
this prodigal son, this young man, he got to thinking one day, you know, all my father's got to look around here and I see the houses and I see the land and one of these days that's going to be mine. Me and my brother, we're going to divide this and, and I'm going to have an inheritance and it's all going to be mine. And he got to pondering on that thing, you know. He said, I'm young now. He said, when I wait till my father dies, then I'm going to be old and not be, going to be able to enjoy the things of life. I want mine now. So we see here that in verse number 12, we see the greed of the prodigal son. We see how greedy he got. He said, he said, Father, he said, I want all that's coming to me. If you'll just give it to me, I'll take it now. I don't want to wait till you're gone. I don't want to wait till I can't uh, have any fun. I want it now. Now his father, being the wise man that he was, he knew that his son wasn't going to be happy. And you say, well, should he have done it? Well, he did. Right or wrong, he gave him what he, he gave him his, his living. He said, here it is, here's your inheritance. You go, you, you, you take it because you want it. So he took that liberty and he stayed around for a while and he got itchy feet. His buddies came back up from town and said, man, we're having a good time on Friday and Saturday night downtown. We're having a good time. We're riding their camels around and around the square. Amen. Amen. We're riding our chariots around and around the square. We're getting absolutely nowhere, but we're riding around and around the square. We're, we're, uh, we're blowing our, our chariot horns, and we're just having a good time, wasting a lot of fuel, but we're having a good time. Amen. Never did understand that. I did it. No telling us how many hundreds of gallons of gas I burnt just riding around town. But we did that, and we called it cruising. We did that, and... Uh, uh, up to no good, I mean just no end to it, just why we did it, I don't know. But his, his friends come up and said, we're having a good time. Why don't you come and join us? You got to think about that. You know, all my buddies are going downtown, they're having a good time. I'm sitting at home on Friday night, I ain't doing nothing. All my buddies, they're going downtown and they're having a good time. They're meeting the girls and they're having their liquor and they're, they're having their wine and they're having a good time. He said, I think I'm going to go join them. So not many days hence, he took all that he is and he went downtown. Man, he walked up and he said, hey, fellas, how you doing? I'm glad you can join us. And he said, look, I got all kinds of money. We're going to have a party. So he began to buy the drinks. He began to pay for all their, all their activities, everything they was doing, because he was a rich young man. He had it all. And he did not think of the consequences of what was going to happen when he spent it all. He was living the day for the day. He was living the hour for the hour. He was living for a time when he was just wanted to have a good time. Now you all know me that know me know that I'm not opposed to having a good time. Amen. Take any opportunity I can have to have a good time. But I want to tell you something. I don't want to do it away from God. But here he got it. You know what he done? He got away from his father. He got away from the influence of, of his family. And he got down there and the Bible says he wasted his substance on riotous living. Now you know what a riot is, don't you? I mean, he did down there, he partied every night. He, he probably got drunk every night. He, if they were smoking dope, he'd probably done that every night. Whatever was going on, this is what that prodigal son did. And he wasted his substance on riotous living. And there he is down there. Every dime he's got is gone. He was, he was not only greedy, he was restless, verse number 13. And he was wasted in verse number 13. And then we find in verse number 14, we find that this prodigal was hungry and in need. Now look. He had friends, brother. That money bought him all the friends in the world. That money bought him everything he could possibly want in life except happiness and joy because that's what he went down there looking for was happiness and joy. He had it, but he didn't know what he had till he got away from it. He got down there and he spent every dime he's had and he went into, the, he went into the, uh, the club that day and he said, all right, boys, let's have us a drink and reach in his pocket and the money's gone. And they look at him and say, well, what, what are you going to do for how are we going to How are we going to party tonight? He said, well, y'all got some money. Y'all spend your money. No, we ain't got no money. We don't spend all ours. So here we find the prodigal, the Jew boy. Now he's a Jewish boy. We find him down there in the far country. And we find him down there. Guess where his friends are at? They ain't there. Well, your money's run out. We go find somebody else. We'll go find somebody. I'll tell you young people something here today or adults, whichever one. You'll do good and you'll have a lot of friends as long as you've got something to offer. But when you, when you run out of something to offer them, you'll find your friends few and far between. 
I've got friends in this life, but I want to tell you something. I thought I've had friends in this life, but I don't know where they're at. I ain't heard from them. I ain't seen them. I got right with God, and they went the other direction. Amen. The only hope for this prodigal was for him to get back right with his father. Amen. And when I got out of the will of God, there was a day when I was just, I, I wasn't lost. I was just out of the will of God. My, my father's always been my father, but I got away from God. And I said, oh, Lord, the, God, you know, God woke me up one night. And I wasn't asleep, but God got my attention. And if I told you what it was that got my attention, you'd laugh at me and you'd say, well, that's foolish. But I'll tell you what, God knew just exactly what button to push to get my attention. And he pushed that button. I said, oh, no, God, I don't want that. God, help. I don't want that, God. I'll do whatever you want. And, oh, guess what I did? I got back to God. Amen. I got back to that altar of prayer, and I got my heart back with God. But I'll tell you something, this prodigal son, he went through the same thing. He said, he said uh, I don't know what I'm going to do now. He said he went to his friends, and his friend says, he went to his friend and said, will you give me something to drink? I'm hungry. Will you give me something to drink? And he go to his friend and say, have you got some food? Will you, will you give me something to drink? And his friend said, go on about your business. He went to another buddy and he said, will you give me something to eat and I'll go ahead. He said, will you buy me some gas for my vehicle? I said, no, you go on. Will you help me? Will you give me a place to sleep tonight? And what did his prodigal, what did his other friend say? No, we ain't got no place for you. Let me tell you something, my friend. When Jesus, amen, saved me by his grace, he put me into a big family. And I want you to know today that in that big family, I strayed away from them. But when it come back and I got right with God, guess what? The family was there for me. Amen. So this prodigal son, he said, I don't know what I'm going to do. But in verse number 18, he came to himself. That means he'd been out in a stupor. Now, I don't know if he'd been drunk all that time, but he came to himself. And he, he, where had he been to come to himself from? He had been down there at, at another man at his at his bidding because his friends wouldn't help him. Nobody, he had no family down there. And he went down to a fellow that had a farm. He said, will you feed me? I'm starving to death. He said, you want a job? I'll give you a job. He said, you go down there and slop my hogs. Y'all know what that means, feed the swine. He said, you go down there and you slop my pigs. And he said, you can do that and I'll give you something to eat. And he had enough to barely get by with. And he was down there slopping him. One of the worst things that a Jewish boy could do would have, would have contact with an unclean animal. And those pigs were unclean to him. But guess what? He said, I'll do it because I don't want to starve to death. But he got down there slopping him hogs. He got down as low as he could get. He got down where no, you know where he never thought he'd be to start with because just a while back, see, he had all that he wanted. But he got down there where he had nothing else. And as he got down there and he's down there slopping him hogs, he said, oh, where have I come? Where have I been? What am I doing down here? I don't have to be down here. Why am I down here? And he gets up and said, I think I'll go home. He says, I remember, oh, hallelujah to God. He said, I remember down at the father's house. It's probably an evening. He says, you know, daddy's sitting down to eat supper. He's probably thinking about me. Mama's cooked supper, and he's, he's, he's sitting down to supper. And there's my brother. He's still there, and, and he's got everything that Daddy give him too. He's still there, but Daddy, he's sitting down to that supper. He said, I bet they got green beans. He said, I bet they got fried potatoes. He said, I bet they got chicken. I bet they got all the good things that we've always had. He said, I bet they've killed a fatty calf today, and they're going to sit down there and eat. And here I am feeding with the pigs. He said, I would have fain. Eat the, sw eat, the, eat the husk. He said, I'd eat the husk because I'm so hungry. He said, but in my father's house, I said, you know, there's plenty of bread. He said, their servants are sitting around the servant's table. And he said, they're eating a whole lot better than I am tonight. They're over in the bunkhouse and they've got all they want to eat. It might not be the best stuff that my daddy's got, but they've got plenty to eat. He said, you know what, if I could just get back with, and be one of the servants. But you know what? He wasn't a servant. Hallelujah, he was a son. But he said, I believe I'll go home. By. I believe I'll go home and eat with the Father. Oh, thank God. He stood down there. He said, I'm going out. I'm going to the house. He didn't have nothing to carry with him. He's headed out. I'm going to the house. 
He's trudging up along there every day. Listen, now, what has Daddy been doing all this time? Now, I don't know how long a period of time this took, maybe a year, maybe six months. But I believe every day his daddy went out and made sacrifice, called out to God and said, Lord, bring my boy home. I believe every day daddy got up and looked down the road, see him. When I turn and look down the road, I don't see him coming today. Maybe he'll come this evening. Every evening he'd go back and he'd look down the road. He ain't maybe tomorrow. But his daddy never give up praying. That son said, I'm going home. Maybe daddy had just let me back in the bunkhouse where I'd eat with the servants. He said, I'll go out and work in the field. He said, that's better than the way I'm a living. <laughs> Friend, that day that I got out of the will of God, I'll just tell you a little bit about it. it was many days in the making. You know, I got, I, my mom and daddy took me to church faithfully all my life. I never missed a church service. I've missed school the next day because of revival service that went on the night before. Mom and dad thought it was more important than me go to the revival service and hear the preaching word of God than to go to school. So they keep me out. I I'd go to I go to church, you know, and mom and daddy always. But I got out and I thought, well, I know I'm pretty good, and I got my driver's license. I know what's going on. Got a car, '66 Mustang, two eighty nine, three speed in the floor. As after I had a 63 Fairlane, I can go on and on, but boy, I was right then. So I, I said, well, I'm, you know, I, I, I'll miss church this time. I, I don't have to go tonight. I, I got something else to do. I'll miss church tonight. So I started missing once in a while church. And then I got to miss another church service, and finally I find myself, well, I, you know, I go when I can. So that's where I went. Just a little bit at a time, see, the devil was drawing me away from my father. He was drawing me away from the house of God. And we got me out there so far. Now, listen. I never, I never drank a, dr a, a drink in my life. I've never liquored up. Never, don't know what beer tastes like. I've never smoked a joint. Never shot nothing up. Now I've told this before. I've had some pretty good stuff when I've had kidney stones and and had to take some pretty good stuff. But that's all for medicinal purposes, and I don't just go out and pop them things anytime I want them. But I can see why people would. But let me tell you something. I never did all those things, but I'll tell you, I, even though I've never been drunk, I got just as far away from God as the biggest drunk could ever get. I got out of fellowship one day at church service. One day at church service going on, and, and uh, uh, fellas at work said, come on, let's go water skiing, preacher. I said, no, nah, well, yeah, why not? I go water skiing. What time are we going? Yeah, I will be about 10 o'clock, 10 o'clock Sunday school time. So at 10 o'clock, instead of being at church, I was down at the lake. I never water skied a day in my life. And I got on, he said, all right. He said, you, you, you put the skis on. We got the boat out. Got it. He said, go back there and get in the water, put the skis on. I put them on. He said, now, when I take off, he said, you just let the boat pull you up. Well, you don't pull on the boat to let the boat pull you up. I'm hard of learning, okay? And about three trips in on my head, I finally got up, and I'm going real good. And all of a sudden, the boat, the, I, I got faster than the boat, and back I went. And I hit the water. We're going pretty good. You know, I got up for a little bit. We're going pretty good. And the last thing I seen was them skis coming off my foot and going up in the air. And the next time I rolled over and opened my eyes, here come one of them skis hit me right there in the head. I told you God knows how to get your attention. Just wondering it hadn't killed me. If it hit the right place, I'd have died. But I knew right then, boy, I ain't going to do that no more. And I ain't got nothing against water skin. Just don't let it get between you and God. God got my attention. And it wasn't long after that till I got my heart right with God. It wasn't that that got me right with God, but it got my attention. This, I, and I, when I got back to the Father, when I got back to where I'd never been so happy in my life. And I've drifted a time or two, Brother David, but I ain't got that way no more. I ain't, I ain't always lived exactly like I should live, but I ain't got that way before. I've been days when I got away from God for a little bit, but I ain't never been back down that trail before. And brother, I ain't going to go back down that trail. By the help of God, I'm not going to do it. Now, if I yielded to this old flesh, and if you yielded to the old flesh, we'd all be back slip before the day's over. You just go ahead and admit it. You ain't, no power, you ain't no power over your own flesh. If you yield to the flesh, there ain't a person in here that won't backslide on God. But if you walk after the Spirit, if you'll do the will of God and walk after the Spirit of God, you'll stay close to Him. And this prodigal, he got down there and he started walking back home. 
started going back to the house. I don't know if it's a day's journey. I don't know if it's half a day's journey, but all the time he's thinking, boy, I hope Daddy will let me in. I hope Daddy will just let me back in the door. I hope Daddy will feed me. I'm hungry. I hope Daddy may have some old clothes I can put on. I'm about naked. I hope Daddy's got some shoes I can put on. These are wore out. I hope Daddy will do this. I hope Daddy will do that. And what's Daddy doing? Daddy's standing up there. He's standing up there on the porch looking down the road. And he sees a little puff of dust off in the distance. He said, you reckon it could be? You reckon it could be Daddy? You reckon it could be my boy? And the closer he gets, amen, he said, I think it's him. Boy, he looks bad. He looks bad. He, he looks like he's tired. Look how skinny he is. He ain't had a lot to eat. Oh, he looks bad. But is that him? And the closer he got, he got about 100 yards away from the church, from the house. He said, oh, that's him. That's my boy. He said, oh, son, I'm so glad to see you. So with open arms, he ran out there and he grabbed his son around the neck and he hugged him up and he, the, little boy, the boy said, oh, what's going on here? You know what's going on? That was his son and he was the daddy. And he wanted to meet his son and he said, oh, I'm so glad you're back home. I welcome you back to the house. And no doubt the little boy said, man, if you'll just let me, daddy, I know I did wrong. See, that's a place you get right with God when you realize you've done wrong and start telling your daddy about it. Amen. You start telling father about it. Oh, I know I've done wrong. Oh, how many times have I had to get before God, Brother Andy? See, God, I know I've done wrong. Lord, I don't deserve your blessing. I don't deserve God your touch, but Lord, I'm sorry. No doubt that young man, he said, Daddy, I'm sorry. Daddy, I wouldn't have done it for nothing if I'd know what I was going to get. Daddy, why didn't you tell me? Daddy said, I'll tell you something. You were too young to listen. He said, well, Daddy, I'm, I, if you'll just let me, if you'll just let me go to the bunkhouse and eat with the servants tonight and let me lay down on their bed and sleep, and I'll get up in the morning and I'll go to the fields with them. Daddy, I can't live this life no more. The servants live better than I've been living, Daddy, and I'm sorry. You know, when I got right with God, I thought, Lord, if I just, just do something. But God wants his best for you, and God wants his best for me. And do you think the Father would have anything to do with him being a servant? Oh, no. Oh, no, son, not for you. Hey, servant, bring me a good robe. Give him a bath. Bring him over here. Clean him up. Find a ring to put on his finger. We're going to have a party because my son that was lost now is found. We're going to have a good time. Hey, I want to tell you something. One day, friend, one day, we're going to go home to be with Jesus. Amen. It's going to be a home going. We call it a homecoming here because people come and they want to see the church and they want to reminisce about the things of old. I dare say many of you were saved down here at this altar. Amen. And many of you may not be members here now, but you were saved at this altar. Never forget where you got right with God. And if you've ever been out of the will of God, never forget where God brought you from. Friend, one day we're going home to be with the Lord. I look at this world, and friend, we are in a dire mess. And I'm not a, I, I don't know a whole lot about prophecy, but I listen to people that do. You know, there's things lining up in the Middle East right now. The Russians are over there already. The Iranians are there. Israel's there. I'm telling you, one wrong move, friend, and the whole place is going to blow up. And guess what? We're going home. The bride of Christ is going to, the father's going to say, son, go get your bride. And the bridegroom's going to step out and he's going to call us home to be with him. He's going to say, come up hither. And the bride of Christ, hallelujah, and the dad in Christ are going to rise first. And the bride of Christ is going to meet them in the air. And so, hallelujah, shall we ever be with the Lord? What a homecoming that's going to be. And the father's there with open arms waiting us to come home. Amen. Now, if you're here today and you're lost without God, let me tell you something. You have, you have no idea about what I'm talking about because you've never been with God to start with. You've never been saved by the, by the grace of God. And if you're here today and you don't know Jesus, remember the rich man and remember Lazarus I was telling you about earlier. I want to say, which way are you going? If you're lost without God, then in hell you'll lift up your eyes. And I don't want to try to scare you, but I want to be, be brave enough to tell you the truth that hell is no place that anybody wants to go. I only met one man in life that said he wanted to go to hell, and he was deranged. 
He was a prisoner to start with. I was just visiting. But he was in prison to start with, and he was deranged. And he said, yeah, that's where I want to go when I die. But he didn't do it. He didn't know what he was saying. But you ask people if they even believe in heaven or hell, where do you want to go? Well, everybody wants to go to heaven. You know how you get there? Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved. Hallelujah to God. That's all it takes. Amen. Simple belief and trust in the gospel that Jesus came into this world born of a virgin, that he lived a perfect life, that he died on the cross of Calvary, that he shed his blood for me, and that again on the third day he arose victorious over death, hell, and the grave. If you believe that, friend, and call out to Jesus, he'll save you by his grace. If you're here today and lost, the warning is this. If the rapture takes place, you're still going to be here and with no hope. Child of God, if you're here this morning, you've, you've drifted far away from home. You're away from, you're away from the, the way that you used to live for the Lord. You've backslid on God. Guess what? Today Jesus said, if you'll come to me, he said, come to me. He said, I'll welcome you back in. Come to me, all you that labor and are heavy laden. He said, I'll give you rest. And if you're restless today because you're away from God, you should say, Lord, I'm coming home. And you come back to the Lord. Amen. Get right with Him before it's eternally too late. You say, well, preacher, am I going to go to hell? Listen, if you're not right with God, if you're saved by the grace of God and you go out here not right with God, you're not going to, you, you'll re win no rewards. You'll be saved yet though as by fire. But, oh, friend, today's the day of salvation. Today's the day to come back to God. And you ought to today, friend. You ought to say, Lord, I'm tired of living this life of sin. Young people, don't ever take the path that I took. Don't do what I, what I did, but do as I say. Don't take the way of the prodigal son. It'll get you down there, and you'll wish you'd never. You, hey, listen, if you're here, young person, and the devil's trying to get you down there, you go down there, and you're going to hear in your mind over and over, I wish I'd have listened to that preacher when he told me that I shouldn't go the way of the prodigal. I wish I'd have listened to him and I'd never be in the mess. I, the mess I, you know, hey, oh my, you know why young people get in the mess they do sometimes? Because nobody will tell them and they ought not to do it. But I want to tell you, this preacher is going to tell you don't go the way of the prodigal. Stay with God. Stay with what he is. Stay with what he's done for you. If he saved you by his grace, surely we can live for him and serve him. Don't go the way of the prodigal. Has it with you and God today? Father, we thank you for the word of God. Lord, I did exactly what I believe you wanted me to do today. I pray, God, you bless the service for blessing this invitation. God, we'll thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Queen family, come on and sing.